Pyeongchang Sunday, and among the athletes competing was a Seattle man who made his third appearance at the Games as a visually impaired alpine skier. They just returned from Korea last night, so making their first stop here at home are Mark Batham and his guide, Kei Yamamoto. Hi, guys. I'm, I'm impressed you're awake. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, 2.40 in the morning in Pyeongchang. Wow. So yeah. the, when did you, when the, did the plane touch down? Like, About just... 6.20 last night. Okay. So you got, did you sleep at all? Not too bad. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. That's good. Well, it's so fantastic to have you here. Multi-medal uh, winner. It's so cool. Uh, this, so it was your third Paralympic Games, right? Yes. All right. And, and second for you guys as a team. Yes. Correct. It's kind of cool. Uh, what specific events did you do this year? We raced the downhill, the super G, and the super combined. Okay. We were qualified to race the super, uh, the giant slalom and the slalom, but we didn't race them this year. So it was busy. Yeah, very busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there you are. So, so tell us, uh, Mark, how, how does it work exactly? Since you're the, you're the guide, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so you're in front of Kate? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm in front. Okay. And then Mark will follow me down the hill. Okay. Um, anywhere from, what, five feet to 30 feet. Okay. Um, depending on, depending the, on the event. And you um, have you have communication have headsets you? in, yeah. That's really so cool. Same style you'd use on a what, motorcycle. What kinds of things are you saying? <laughs> I mean, you, can see, you can see it well, here. Like I'm, I'm usually telling them to slow down. Unfortunately, <laughs> 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 I wish that wasn't the case, right? but that's usually yeah. what I do. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's kind of a mix. Um, like you'll see, you know, as we're the terrain's changing. Um, so Kate's in yellow out. in front, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm calling out those terrain changes. Um, just kind of verbalizing whatever I'd be thinking to myself. Right, whatever you're feeling, right? With your yeah, that's this kind of the same thoughts. Just you yell, mogul! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the hard part. I can't yeah. imagine. I mean, skiing is hard enough because you, you're constantly realizing what's going on with your legs and that there are bumps and whatever's happening. Are, are you scared of what's hap going on? Like are you, that you're going to hit something you can't see? It's going to throw well, you? I hit things that I can't see all the right. time. <laughs> but if I'm following him, I know that the track is safe. Right. And he will call... Everything out, Cade has to multitask like crazy. So he, not only is he thinking about his own technique because I uh, copy it subconsciously, mm. so he wants to provide a good example, but then he's got to pick a line that I can ski. He's got to communicate all the different changes in the terrain and the rhythm of the right. course, the changes in the gates. So his mind is in overdrive. And, um, and so I just am focused on following him and very few surprises occur uh, when I do that. So you were diagnosed like way back in your 20s, right? Yes, uh, I was How many years 28 ago? years old okay. in 1986. Okay, so tell us, tell us like what, what do you actually see as you're going down the mountain? So uh, I, the best way to think about it is a couple of ways, uh, there's a couple of ways I can elaborate on this. So one is if uh, you want to mimic what I see, just grab a toilet paper tube and look through that toilet paper tube. Oh, interesting. So I have uh, tunnel vision, okay. very narrow right. field of vision. A normal person would have 80 degrees of peripheral vision, kind of a radius off of the center. I have about five degrees radius off of center. Okay. And you were a competitive skier at a very young age, right? Tell, tell us kind of your journey. Yeah, so my dad got into skiing late in his life, meaning, you know, 30s compared to most people, uh -huh. and he just had a passion for it. So I got into skiing when I was about eight and progressed through ski school. By the time you get through that, racing is kind of the natural thing to do next to advance your skiing. Right. And I had a natural ability in it, and so uh, I really focused on that by the time I was in high school and actually left uh, Mercer Island High School to attend Wenatchee Valley Junior College for half of my high school years so that I could ski 110, 120 days a year. Oh, so you were a high Mission level. Ridge. Yeah. I was aspiring to make the U.S. ski team in training where you have a co race course memorized and the hill memorized and so your vision impairment doesn't impact you because I didn't know I had one, I could compete in training with uh, young men that were say three years, four years older than I was and on the lower levels of the U.S. ski team. So it looked like I had the potential to get to that level. But then in a race course where you only look at it one time, you have to do it from memory, um, I would get tangled up. I'd hook hmm. tips, I'd fall, I'd ski out of the course um, just because I wasn't seeing very well or being able to see very far right. ahead. And you kind of, uh, after your diagnosis in your 20s, you, you gave up skiing for a long time, right? I actually gave up skiing when I didn't achieve my goals when I was right. about 18. Oh, I was okay. frustrated that so I could train so well but not race as effectively. Yeah. And so I went to the UW um, and you know business school and I just didn't hardly ski at all during those years. Um, but once I got the diagnosis in 86, 
There's very few things I can remember once they told me I had this eye disease, but I can remember sitting in that office thinking, well, I will do the Paralympics someday. Hmm. Oh, so you had an idea that that was what was going to happen. Oh, yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Now, how many, how many medals now? Three. Three medals. One from Vancouver in the downhill, and, and uh, Cade and I really each cool. got two medals at Sochi. So, Cade, talk about that. I love the teamwork aspect of this. Yeah. I mean, what was that like for you? Yeah, it's it's different, you know, like growing up ski racing. Um, yeah, you were a ski racer too, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, so I ski raced up into college and then called it quits after my second knee injury. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yeah, it's it's definitely different, you know, because you're going down the hill as a team. So it switches the whole aspect of ski racing as an individual sport Yeah, to be. Super cool. How, how did you guys sport. come together as a team? Um, so <laughs> interestingly, a mutual friend of ours had just said to me, out of the blue, Mark, if you ever need another guide, you should consider Cade. And I said, you know, I should have another guide uh, in case my current guide right. has a change in life. Because, you know, you, uh, you tend, uh, tend to have these guides when they're just out of college and eventually, you know, life evolves. And so it just so happens that I raced with Cade's mom back hmm. in the 70s at oh, Mission wow. Ridge. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's and so. Great. Um, we did a couple of events together and it worked great. Uh, my previous guide had some other commitments, and so we started uh, skiing together December time frame right before Sochi, which is not a very long period of time to start work with the yeah, guide before sure. the Paralympics, because a lot of athletes are with their guides a minimum, two years is a short amount of time. There's one team that's been together 14, 15 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. How do you like uh, skiing against people who are sometimes half your age? It must be like. I'm lucky if they have my age, <laughs> right? Most most of them could be my kids. So, um, but I, That's I, cool but though. I, but I absolutely love it, right? Um, unfortunately, they're getting bigger, stronger, faster. I'm getting <laughs> older, softer, and slower. Um, but, you know, they are a couple things for me. One, they are, I find them completely inspirational. Yeah. And the way they cope with their physical limitations helps me cope with mine. And it's one of the real reasons I stick with it. It's, it's really cool. Um, yeah, just very therapeutic. Can I ask how old you are? I'm 59. 59. That's pretty, pretty great that you're... And the next one's coming up in four years. You ready? <laughs> I'm going to need a little breather <laughs> between now and then. We'll see. Yeah, well, great to meet you. Yep. Thanks a million. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks there for having go. us on. It's cool to have a, a teamwork with the Olympic medals. All right, when we come back, how a new project is hitting the road in search of stories that inspire and improve our community, your community. What you don't want to miss. It's, uh, the project is all about next.